I'm going to click on the flashcard exercise that I created earlier. Uh, just the two flashcards in here. Very simple exercise. What I want to do now is switch editing on. And we have the familiar form and interface. I'm going to scroll past the cards themselves and go to the text overrides and translation section. Now, the first thing that I could do here is to change the language that's actually being used. So if I wanted to translate the language in this activity and I'm dealing with a French activity I in French language, I can do that here, change that. There's a number of supported languages. Uh, for now, I'm going to stick with English. My English is far better than my French. So under the uh, drop down here, we can see the various pieces of text, the various strings, sentences, phrases, labels, the text that's used throughout this content type. And what I can do is replace any of those. So I may be dealing, for example, in this case with younger learners. So I may want to alter the vocabulary that's used. I may want to make things more friendly, perhaps more informal. Uh, and a good tip here is that you probably don't want to do this every time you create flashcards. So if you do it once and set it up as appropriate for the audience, for the learners that are, that are taking this content, you can then just duplicate that activity knowing that it's all set up already. It may not be important, um, but it's something that's worth understanding how to do that. So I'm happy with my changes. I come down and save that content. And then straight away, as we view that content, any of the text, any of the language strings that I've changed in there will be reflected straight away in here. So if I check that answer, maybe that feedback text is has been edited um, on this second dialog card. Obviously, I'm going to put the correct answer for Koala. And when I check that, again, I'll get the feedback. But now the feedback is the text that I've put in there as appropriate to this group or for this exercise. I can also look at the results and again the text in here could be altered to whatever you want, whatever you feel is most appropriate. Now it's important to recognize that different content types have different language and text strings of course. So I'm going to go and edit this particular content and this is created using a presentation. So we edit this in the same way. I'm just doing this on h5p.com, but we have the same editor. So under text overrides and translations, this time I'm seeing course presentation. And of course, most of the content is related to slides. So here, uh, a completely different set of language strings, text, phrases, words, which again, we might want to alter to be more appropriate for our specific audience, whether that's because it's a highly professional audience, uh, a younger audience, maybe an audience using uh, English as a second language here. So I might want to think carefully about the vocabulary that's being used um, because it shouldn't be a barrier to people actually working through the content. You know, we shouldn't be confusing or, or using phrases and words that they may not understand. So again, once I'm happy with that, I can click on save and that will save like that.